Hi everyone, Jason here from Off The Beat Path and we're continuing on the 76 shakedown trip. Uh, so just pulled up from a uh, from our, um, well it was going to be lunch stop but didn't end up being lunch stop so checking out the uh, campsite there. Um, it was a bit uh, soft and dusty so we headed back out onto Feeney's track and continued heading west towards the border. Um, the Vic SA border. Now, uh, you will have noticed in the last video on this one, um, for those that want to support the channel, we've had a few reach out to us and um, say they'd like to do something to support us financially, and we appreciate anyone who's able to do that. Um, we have set up a Buy Me a Coffee page, uh, buymeacoffee.com forward slash OTB. P off the beaten path. Um, so yeah, if you want to do that, um, really appreciate it. Jump on there. Uh, you can buy us one coffee, two coffees, three coffees, whatever you want. Um, any um, support financial is, uh, of course, going to go to trips and gear um, to make these videos and make them better for you guys. So uh, thanks if that's something you're able to do. Uh, we certainly appreciate it um, and we enjoy making these videos for you guys. So Feeney's track continued basically not to disappoint as you can see. Um, we, we fortunately or unfortunately depending how you look at it didn't get any really big huge sections of water like we'd had previously um, but um, we certainly um, certainly did hit the odd uh, soft wet spot that's for sure. And as I think I said uh, in the last video, it was uh, pretty interesting um, that um, to, to explore this neck of the world, given that I spent a lot of time when I was younger in, in this area, but never actually um, made it up to um, explore these um, desert parks. So as you just saw there, we passed the north-south track and um, continued on. Um, westerly towards the border. We're only a couple of k's out from the border here. Track's generally pretty firm and uh, uh, there's not, you know, not any great difficulty in driving this section of track and um, we're seeing some um, decent sized trees start to appear in this part of the park as well. And as you can see there on the screen we've just crossed the border track um, which is another north-south track um, that uh, crosses Feeney's track and we're literally maybe a k and a half um, from the actual border track. Adam's setting a pretty good pace up front there And um, it's interesting, uh, a lot of the maps note in this area, dunes, 10 metres, 15 metres, what, what have you, um, you don't really see or feel that because they're not really steep dunes, they're kind of just like hills and they're so vegetated that they don't stand out as dunes either, like you can see that one ahead there, um, you know, it's probably a couple of metres but it doesn't feel like that because it's a gradual hill uh, up to the crest. And as I said, this is all really pretty hard packed through here. Uh, there's, it's not you don't think of them as dunes because they don't have that soft, sandy feel that you get uh, on the more southern sections of the border track, and that you would get on beach dunes or um, you know in the Simpson or something like that. Um, so this area certainly does have some of that softer sand. It's just not in this part of the area where we are. So. We've actually hit the border track here, um, pretty well signposted, which makes life a bit easier. And um, it was getting sort of into the afternoon, so we pulled up here just for a really quick lunch stop. A little bit drier underfoot than the uh, campground we'd stopped at earlier. And yeah, it wasn't too long before we uh, got going again. 
So heading southbound here on the on the border track, and already you can see the track here is starting to change. Um, and look, that's probably been my experience. The border track is that it changes hugely from one section to the next. It changes from a, a wide open track to a very narrow enclosed. The surface you're on changes from something fairly hard packed to to very soft and dry. And from what I understand, at different times of the year, again, particularly in the more southern section, conditions change markedly with uh, <coughs> with the seasonal temperature. Um, when the sand's a lot hotter, it gets a lot softer. So through here, we've got a fairly wide track, nice, nicely hard packed, just working our way over these dunes. As I said, you tend not to think of them as dunes. Uh, and you can see some sand on the SA side there over in the distance. Because they are so vegetated that you don't think of these as dunes, but that's exactly what they are. And this particular section of track, there wasn't a lot of corrugations or wombat holes or that sort of thing. We were able to make a pretty good pace. And like a lot of tracks, that sort of confidence will sometimes catch you unawares. You'll hit some wombat holes or some some ruts unexpectedly. Um, I certainly uh, had the back wheels off the ground more than once. And um, yeah, here you can see the main track is actually headed away from the border. So we've stayed on the main track but there was that smaller track on the right and Adam, who is navigating on this trip for us, has realized, no, we're actually heading well away from the main border track. So we've turned around and gone back and this is the little track on the right hand side, which is actually the proper border track or at least aligned with the proper border track. So we've taken this, again, apologies for the uh, mud and dirt that is on the camera lens. First um, sort of softer sand hill just here. Probably hit that a little slower than I ideally would have. Um, but um, one thing this trip did is convince me that I actually don't need to spend the money to upgrade the tyres on the 76 anytime real soon. As you can see, they're a little tight. Um, the vegetation is right up to the track. But um, <clears throat> I thought these road biased all terrains that the dealer put on the vehicle for roadworthy when I got it was something that I was going to have to replace very, very quickly. Um, this trip has shown me that soft sand, mud, whatever, I probably don't need to. That little clip coming over the hill there probably gives you the best indication of the height of these dunes. Um, they're very gentle up, very gentle down, and when you look at the long distance between the crests, it gives you an idea of the height. You can see here this section of track is rutted, and you can see the vehicle moving side to side. So many sections of this track were like that. Um, possibly due to people coming through with um, inadequate tyre pressures. The earlier sections of the track are really firm, so maybe they hadn't lowered their tyre pressures. At least that's what I keep hearing is the reason for that. But yeah, very quickly you hit sections like that, your vehicle's actually rocking side to side, and it's uh, pretty violent sitting inside the car. At least with the, uh, the leaf sprung suspension on the rear and the solid axle it is compared to what the pads used to do, that's for sure. Um, very different passenger experience. I'll be really interested to see how that changes over time as I upgrade the suspension in the 76. Uh, at the moment, still running the stock suspension. And it does, it does, this section of track really does keep you guessing. You get sections like this where you get a good view of what's ahead, but then it doesn't take very long. 
and you've disappeared into something and you can't really see. So you can see here we've skipped ahead a little bit. Very different track conditions. We've got vegetation in the middle of the track. It's like a, an old little farm track, sort of train track style thing. Trees up on both sides. Um, and this happens very, very quickly. Um, this is not 10 kilometers down the track from where we just were at all. It does change quite markedly and quite quickly. And you can see a parallel track in this section at least on the um, South Australian side over there. And look for most of the border that little star picket wire fence that that is the border fence and again you can see the the vehicle moving around a fair bit climbing up here where there, there there's definitely some beginnings of wombat holes being dug there on that little climb and certainly if you're driving a pretty big rig uh, it'd get a bit of tight a bit tight through here and you definitely get a bit pinstriped again this section slowing right down you can see the vehicle moving i've probably just realized i'm in the wrong gear there still learning to drive a manual <laughs> just taking it nice and steady here and trying to stay out of the ruts and see if see if i can get a, a smoother ride Once again we're back into the sort of the more open area, softer sand, farm there on the right hand side, on the South Australian side, not sure what they're growing. The soil here is mostly sand so I'm guessing whatever they're growing they're probably going to add a bit of nutrient to it. Certainly a very different uh, scene on the on the SA side there versus the Vic side. And again, we're back into the bush here as the track just deviates from the border slightly. And it really is a pretty sandy track at this stage. And again, we'll be back here in October and I'll be interested to see if I feel like these conditions are any different when the weather's a bit warmer because by all accounts they are very different. You can see people have dug some decent ruts here climbing these hills. And uh, up ahead there you can see uh, a good sized hill coming up by the look of it with some um, alternate routes cut into it. When you get to the bigger dunes here on the border track you find that there's, there's often two, three, four different sort of routes you can tackle and whenever you get to the softer sand the car starts moving around shaking side to side a lot just from the holes that have been dug out from previous vehicles taking the tracks adequate tyre pressure is, is certainly key now I was running about 22 psi uh, front and rear that seemed pretty good for, for this vehicle Time will tell. Again, another good sized dune there. And that's the tricky part of these is halfway up like that you'll find these rough sections where the vehicle wants to move around and will knock some speed out of you and again i think if that uh, sand was a little bit softer you might have a very different experience and here we are a couple of k's on and we're onto this almost what feels like a highway compared to what we've been on so our plan here is we were heading south uh, we were planning to uh, duck into Pinaroo and 
refuel and then camp at the northern end of Nagarkat. I don't know if that's how you say it. Uh, it's probably wrong. It's probably a silent end. Um, but uh, camp at the northern end of the National Park where the one-way section of the border track starts and we're going to tackle that section of the border track tomorrow. As you can see through here, we're making pretty good time. Um, but once again, there's a few soft spots even on a track this big where it's held a bit of water. Now, heading south here, you can see the track continues on the right, but there was a very clear detour sign. Um, so we've turned left here onto Braun Road to detour. And from what I understand, I have done some research since we did this trip. This is a mandatory detour. Um, it's not optional. You do have to take this detour. Um, and it's basically to get around um, some private land. And um, yeah, so you head east on Braun Road and then you come south on Petinia, uh, Peniche, I don't even know how to say it, <coughs> um, North Track or North Road. Again, this is um, not a super high traffic road. Um, fairly enclosed, some softer sand here. It's a nice drive through here. Um, and that's probably the big thing with the border track is, um, you know, some people will say there's a whole lot of nothing out there, and there kind of is a whole lot of nothing out here, but the track changes, and if you enjoy driving, you enjoy getting out there and seeing it, you, you'll enjoy the drive down the border track. Now we're just chatting on the radio there, um, trying to figure out uh, whether this is one that we should take or not. Um, and the verdict was that we continue straight ahead because you can see the detour sign there on the signpost on the left saying the detour continues straight ahead. So we have continued straight ahead. sure but I think we could have probably turned back to the right there having looked at the map since um, but we followed the detour signs and you can see here um, this is actually Bolton's Road so yeah actually this is where we needed to turn that one that previous track takes you into the state forest and uh, wouldn't have actually gotten us where we needed to go and possibly I think crosses private land um, whereas here we are taking Bolton's Road west back towards the border track and we're driving through State Forest at this point. Um, again, very similar to the earlier track. The sand was softish. You can see the tracks left in the sand from Adams GU up ahead of me. Um, not digging huge holes, but you can definitely tell the vehicle's driven it. And this section of track was a little more open than earlier so and that's what I mean you're driving through the same bush but on the one hand you've got trees and bushes right up to the the edge of the car and then the next section of tracks like this where it's you know being cleared and you've got a meter or so on the side and then you move into something like this you've got some grass and it's, it's just got a very different feel and you can see here we've rejoined the border track and it is actually continuing south from further north there so it's a little bit unclear um, but we've followed the detour signs and that is what you're meant to do apparently. Uh, so this section of the border track is very different to what we were driving earlier obviously. You can see the suspension's getting a bit of a work, work out here driving over these humps. And yeah, we, we come out here in uh, to this cleared area, which is just an area between the state forest and um, the next um, next retained protected forest area. Uh, this is some private property, I believe, in the middle here. And continuing south on the border track. Still got a few k's to go before we get um, 
anywhere near like a turn off um, to uh, head down to Pinaroo. But a lot of these sections through here, you do make pretty good time. Probably doing, you know, 40 k's an hour, something like that. Um, except for these sections like this where it is a bit bumpy, you do need to slow down. And that's the thing with the sand, you can, you often can't tell when these sections are coming. So managing your speed and not hitting some of these dips too hard and too fast is, is definitely a key factor. You can see there we've just crossed Allen Road. continuing south it's it's more of a dirt track than a sand track again at this point that's what I mean it does change and the bushes close back in and track conditions are a, a little worse than what they were you can certainly see they're getting close to the camera and although on a map this track looks like a straight line you can tell here it's pretty far from a straight line it does sort of weave its way through a corridor so it's it's not just something that you get on and set and forget uh, you are actually driving this track now, I don't know if this is true but we were talking about this um, and apparently these might be sand farms here on the right hand side where they actually collect sand from these sand farms um, somebody knows something more about that I would love you to put some information in the comments down below um, I'm looking at that going you know it's a shame that's private land because you'd have so much fun with your for me on that but definitely don't be doing that uh, it's private property and apparently possibly a, a sand farm of some sort and you can see the, the the border track here is weaving its way through this corridor and you know a little bit bumpy and very different to what we we're driving earlier on now keep in mind we're driving this in winter so the temperature was fairly low relatively speaking and um, a lot of the sand was probably a lot firmer I think I've mentioned already uh, that we're, we're coming back here in October we're doing the whole border which is going to be an awesome trip um, I probably won't show as much of this section given that you know I've already done this video this year um, we'll focus on some of the areas that we, we haven't already filmed this year uh, but we'll definitely be coming back through here so I will have the opportunity to compare it and see what it's like um, compared to having driven it in winter uh, now again obviously left and right track normally you would take the left track the right track to me looked interesting and I was keen to see how these road bias tires would perform throwing a little bit of sand up there as you saw and I wasn't too worried about oncoming because obviously Adam is in front of me and if there was oncoming traffic he would have let me know uh, and yeah we just pulled up here for a, uh, a little uh, little rest stop stretch the legs before getting going again and continuing south farms here you can see this uh, border track is is really their access to their properties and um, yeah we've moved out of the forest into sort of a grassland setting you can see some more forest coming up ahead um, you can tell by the length of the shadows next to the vehicle there it is getting late in the day the, the lighting was spectacular at this time of day really nice um, just lighting everything up that uh, late afternoon sun really just sweeping across quite an enjoyable time to be out particularly we're driving south not not west fortunately and 
once again before too long we're back in amongst it uh, in amongst the forest more so and uh, crossing Mulcra Road here Summerton Road and Mulcra Road um, so just a few more k's to the Mallee Highway and then into Pinaroo Again, that property there on the on the side is all private property, so you do need to stay on the border track and, and, and stay within these corridors. Even when there's open fencing like that, it is private property for the majority of this either side here. And again, this section is a, a much sandier track than what we've been driving on more recently. And back into the grassland again we go. <coughs> and I mean this this section here could be you know uh, uh, just a, a farm track between farms anywhere. Um, just happens to be the border track. And again, fairly bumpy in sections here, which you're probably getting a feeling for. Um, if you watch the vehicle, obviously the GoPro does a pretty good job of image stabilization, but if you watch the vehicle, it's moving an awful lot. So on the one hand, it looks like a fairly flat track and you've got that inclination to put the foot down and, and, and try and eat up some miles, and on the other hand, you'll hit sections like that that are really gonna bottom out your suspension if you hit them too hard. And here's some more. And just like you see here, there's the odd little side track. Now, what you'll find is those side tracks are generally in areas where there's, there's, there's been a bog hole or something develop on the main track, um, as, as we were to come to learn. Um, our particular condition at the moment, they were fine for us to drive through, but if you are headed, uh, driving on the border track and you, uh, you see those detour tracks going around, um, you may want to consider taking them because they're usually there for a reason, as, uh, as we found out on this trip. And basically what we found is the more southern you get, the more of those you're going to come across because um, it seems like the wetter it gets, which makes sense again. Less rainfall up in the Mallee um, compared to um, southwest Victoria as you work your way down. So yeah, another bypass track there on the left. Just looking up ahead there at that section going, are we driving this or are we driving around it? Um, in the end I've decided, yeah, actually it doesn't look that bad. We're just gonna drive it. And so we did. But yeah, every time you think that you're just about done and you're about to get on the bitumen, uh, it does uh, throw you a few little surprises. It's definitely a track that just keeps on giving. And to a certain extent, you really, you just don't know what's around the corner until you get there. It's, um, it, it just varies hugely. So you can see here, um, Adam stopped up ahead. There's a bypass track on my left. Not super apparent from the distance we are here, but there's a pretty wet, boggy, soft section. And Adam's just explaining, he elected to take the bypass track and I, I may want to do the same. Um, now it was getting late in the afternoon um, and I didn't want to be the reason that um, we ended up stuck somewhere, so uh, I have elected to take the bypass track. Luca, who's behind me, 
said, why would a twin lock GU take a bypass track? And um, he did drive through there with uh, no real degree of difficulty at all. Running a decent set of mud terrain tyres as well he is though. So still getting used to the 76 and how it handles and still running those road bias all terrains. Yeah, I, I, I opted for the safer, more conservative course of action. And we're pretty much here on the, the final run down to the Nally Highway, uh, which will then take us into Pinaroo on the bitumen. As you can see on the screen there, we've just passed Oster Road, which is about a K from the Mallee Highway. And at this point, the border track's a, a pretty decent track or road. Um, and yeah, I've had a GoPro battery change there, so didn't actually get the transition on film, but yeah, we're on the, on the highway there and pulled into the BP at Pinaroo. So, so that's what the car's looking like after a solid day. And we're on to find a campsite for tonight. Uh, so I filled up at Walpop this morning, and um, Adam and Luca filled up at Walpop last night. So they drove from Walpop down to the campsite, which wasn't far. I will check on the map exactly how far that was. Really wasn't far at all, though. And um, and then back again. That's the only extra distance that they've done compared to me. So filling up at Pinaroo, I put 30 litres in uh, the 76 and Luca put double that in his TB48, um, 60 odd litres. So yeah, Luca put 60 litres in his TB48, so basically double what I've used in the V8 diesel 76. So I'm um, pretty impressed with the fuel efficiency of this thing so far. So um, I'll have a chat to Adam tonight and see how much he put in. So yeah, from there we headed into the top end of Nagarkat, um, about to hit the um, much softer sand um, and the one-way section of the border track, but that's, um, that's for tomorrow. Um, for, it was late in the afternoon, probably later than the camera makes it look. Um, so we ended up um, hunting around for a campsite. There's a few options there on the northern side of Nagarkat before you hit the one-way section of the border track. Um, as always guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, part of the proper shakedown trip for the 76. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this trip. Um, great, great bunch of guys to, to be on the tracks with. Um, and um, yeah, wait till you see uh, what happens tomorrow before the border track lets go of us. That'll be in the next video. Uh, we'll have the 50 odd kilometer section, one way section of the border track and then the exit from the border track. Um, as I said at the start of the video guys, if you like what we do and you want to financially support the channel and are able to do that, we really appreciate it. Um, check out our Buy Me A Coffee page at buymeacoffee.com forward slash OTBP. Um, thanks for watching, see you in the next video.